Hello, I'm Helen Cowley, tax partner at UHI Hacker Young in Manchester. This video is to explain how innovative businesses can obtain government support through grants and loans throughout the coronavirus pandemic. Now, there have been a lot of measures introduced by the government to assist UK businesses throughout the coronavirus outbreak. We have provided details on many, if not all, of the schemes available. Details can be found on our website, which is uhy-uk.com. So some of the measures have included the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, the Job Retention Scheme, and the Bounce Back Loan Scheme for SMEs. Today, I will focus on innovation funding and loans, which are aimed at the UK's most R&D intensive firms. On the 20th of April, the Chancellor announced a £1.25 billion support package for UK firms driving innovation. Now, this includes a £500 million investment fund for high growth companies impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. This is known as the Future Fund. It's a mixture of government funding and private sector funding. There will also be £750 million of grants and loans made available to SMEs focusing on R&D. And the aim is to help firms in some of the most dynamic sectors of the UK economy throughout this global crisis. The Chancellor does, after all, consider that Britain is a global leader in R&D. Now, the Future Fund is a £500 million investment fund for high growth companies. The government is actually committing initially to £250 million with equal match funding to be provided by private investors. The scheme will be delivered in partnership with the British Business Bank and it's due to launch any time this month um, and it's expected to continue until the end of September 2020. So there will be a minimum loan per applicant of £125,000 and a maximum loan of £5 million. Like I say, with private um, investors at least matching government loans. Now, the loans will convert to equity on the company's next round of qualifying funding or at the end of the term of the loan if it is not repaid. And to be eligible broadly, a company must be an unlisted UK registered company that has raised at least £250,000 in equity investment in the last five years. It must also have a presence in the UK and in the case of group companies, only the parent company can apply for the loan. There will be an additional 750 million targeted support for the UK's most R&D intensive SMEs. So that will be provided by Innovate UK, which is a national agency, part of the UK Research and Innovation, which is a non-departmental public body funded by granting aid um, by the UK government. Now, Innovate UK, already grants government-backed funding to 2,500 existing customers and the idea is that they will now accelerate up to £200 million of grant and loan payments for those customers with an extra £550 million being made available to increase support for existing customers and also with around £175,000 of that extra funding to be offered to around 1,200 firms that are not currently in receipt of Innovate UK funding. The first payment should be made any time now. Now, it's worth noting that Innovate UK grants are notifiable state aid, so businesses will need to be mindful of this if they are also claiming R&D tax relief. Now, whether or not your company is eligible for the Future Fund or Innovate UK's funding, it still may be worth considering claiming R&D tax relief. This will reduce your company's corporation tax bill or even result in a repayment of tax. 
Qualifying R&D is very broadly revenue expenditure incurred in seeking an advancement in science or technology. Now, this can really assist with cash flow, particularly as you may be able to look back over two accounting periods and claim a repayment of tax previously paid. If your company is an SME, it can claim 230% of the expenditure incurred, or if it is loss making, it may surrender those losses for a 14.5% repayable tax credit. If your company is large or receiving notifiable state aid, it won't be able to claim R&D tax relief for SMEs. It may instead be able to claim what is referred to as RDEC, which is a tax credit that has recently been increased from 12% to 13%. It's not as beneficial as SME R&D relief, and there are more restrictions on its use, but it's still worth considering in the current climate or in any event, if your company is carrying out qualifying R&D. So that's a brief introduction to innovation funding and loans and R&D tax relief. I would be very pleased to talk to you in more detail on any of the points discussed. Um, and in the meantime, thank you for listening. This is Helen Cowley, Tax Partner at UHY Hacker Young in Manchester.